talk about assumptions that I made. And I was wrong about hard drive speeds. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos. Today we are talking about speeds, specifically Gen 4 drives going into Gen 3 laptops. The assumption would be that they're going to hit the top speed they can hit. Kind of wrong on that. So, answering a question from somebody who was watching my videos, they're like, well, what does happen when you put a Gen 4 and a Gen 3? My response was, well, like, yeah, go, go nuts. And you'll have, like, a super fast speed on there. The topic could go. And it did go a topic could go. But you would assume it's going to hit the top of that Gen 3 speeds. You know, just thought it would. Uh, but then we never take into consideration other things like, I don't know, the motherboard, another hardware that goes into a laptop. And if it's not Primo, then you got some situations. So um, let's look at something like a Gen 4 drive, like this one from Western Digital, SN850, 970 EVO. Let's compare these and see what the numbers are. Just a quick note, as we get into the numbers, I do have an XPS 9570. It's a couple years old. It is an awesome laptop. It has this issues of course but it's a gen 3 laptop so i could do this test for this viewer they also asked me hey some people do reviews with safe mode can you show the difference between safe mode and non-safe mode when it's just running normally so i'm going to show the numbers there too as we jump into these numbers we do see that the writing is slower now it's not significantly slower in everything just in the sequential and we can see that the uh, gen 4 drive with the sn850 is uh, trying to keep up with the reading. And what we would, you would like to see is this to be both higher. Now, like my assumption would be this is a Gen 4 drive and you know, you'd know you want to see around 4,000 megabytes per second on both kind of thing, but not happening. Which begs the question, like why? And you know, and it, you have to look at the rest of the hardware, but this is on average and uh, of what we do see. I will be showing you another example with my uh, desktop so you can really put everything into perspective if you're looking to buy a Gen 4 drive and throw it into a Gen 3 device to get those top speeds. Now, this is non-safe mode, and what we see here is the idea of the speeds a little bit slower, and especially with this um, random 4K, and we do see that that the idea here is if Windows is running, it is using up resources, and we want to understand the whole idea behind caching. Now, on these better drives, there will be better caching. The new 980 that came out versus the uh, 970 will have better caching, so it should be a faster drive. And we can see this when we are comparing the drives here because the Gen 4 drive does have better caching. When we jump into the IOPS and we're doing this uh, performance test, we do see the numbers are, again, uh, rather significant but similar on the different aspects of what the drive is doing. Now, what I did notice was this 671, um, it was random. Sometimes it would hit the equivalence of uh, what we were getting here with the Evo, and sometimes it would hit the actual 1800. Now, when we go over to the Windows running, um, this just significantly dropped, and this was just like five runs that I did, same numbers, and this is what we're seeing based on what Windows is dragging on the resource, which tells us that, hey, if you're going to be running something like this 970 and you're thinking, hey, I'm going to go for the 980 or I'm going to go get a Gen 4 drive because I'm going to be upgrading anyways, which is why we're doing these tests. It's about the upgrade in the future. If you have an older laptop, you kind of want to you know, look at it and say, is it just for this laptop or are we thinking about the future laptops? And, and if I'm going to go that route, should I buy a Gen 4? Because I'm going to have it for six months to a year and then I'll have the Gen 4 drive. Lastly, we're comparing the Western Digital SN 850 in a Gen 4 machine with a Gen 3 switched on. So I've uh, looked at my machine, it's a 5900X by AMD. I have a, a, a Gen 4 motherboard. I have a 128 gigabytes of RAM in there. So it's this PC right here. And basically I've just gone into the BIOS, switched it off from Gen 4 to Gen 3 to see what the numbers are. And you can see that in Gen 3 mode, it's, it's hitting 3700 megabytes per second on the read and 34 on the right. Now we compare that to a Gen 4 and this drive is just hitting 
up to 7,000 versus 5,200. And this is as top speeds that the drive can actually go. And what we can see overall, there is a lot of uh, similarities in how fast everything's moving on the uh, random, not just the sequential. And there are, it's pretty much keeping pace. So you're just losing that sequential aspect, uh, if you ask me, of, of the speeds. Now, when we switch over to the uh, performance uh, runs, we can see that these kick up and they are comparable. And the idea then becomes, well, what are you losing out with Gen 4 if we're looking at these numbers and you're trying to make a commonality behind that? Well, this is the sequential. So how fast a, a, a drive can go on sequential? And this is the numbers that you see on drive. So whenever you're buying anything and this drive has this numbers down here and you're seeing, oh, look at that. And you look at the back and the back tells you, oh, it's going at 7,000 and 5,000. The drive on itself Okay, we'll hit those top numbers on sequential. It's not going to hit those numbers on the, the randoms. And this is where people get disappointed because they're like, oh, I bought this hard drive, but it's not always going at top speed and it's really not going as fast as other drives. And, and this is where when we compare to the 970, we do see those numbers are similar on the random. And, and, and the idea now becomes, well, which numbers are important with what tasks we are using? This is why when gamers get faster drives, they're like, well, why isn't this loading faster? Well, it's not using the drive's capabilities for that actual software. That's it. The game is a software, so it's going to you know, use what it needs to use. Same when we're using anything with, for instance, Adobe. Certain aspects of Adobe will use more resources. And if it's not going to use them, it's not going to use them. And I made that example where somebody was upset at me. And I was like, what are you getting upset at? So I had to email them. We had them email back and forth so I can explain to them to stop being upset because they're not looking at it from a different lens. It is what I ask everybody to do. Take a step back, okay? When you're looking at buying one of these drives versus one of these drives, okay, Gen 3 versus Gen 4, you're going to ask yourself, what am I using it for? Now, clearly, a faster drive will be overall faster. But in the case that I'm showing you here, yes, you can see that some of the stuff is similar when we're switching into Gen 3 versus Gen 4. And when we're comparing something like Adobe, where I'm pulling all this data in and then using certain functions, Adobe will not be using the top capabilities of a Gen 4 drive. So you're not going to see that drive explode to 7,000 megabytes per second. That's it. Other tasks might. And we see this when it's writing to the drive. When it's writing to the drive, I've never seen it go to 7 terabyte, uh, 7,000 megabytes per second. I'm seeing it go to 1,000, 1,500, and it's pulling. So if you have a slower drive, then there's no need to stress it. Now, this is the idea that most softwares are optimized for Gen 3, and they're gradually being optimized for Gen 4. So when people are rushing out there to buy the latest and greatest, you need to think about future. What's the future going to look like? And right now, and how does that relate? Simple. I know this was useful for people that were looking to get this information. I want to address something for the people that are wondering, well, why, why is this question here? And, and I want to put this into perspective. When you're going to go buy something, a Gen 4 drive is generally more expensive than a Gen 3 drive. So we're looking at this and we're saying, well, is it worth it if I find a Gen 4 drive on sale? And you can see that it is worth it. It is worth it, but not by a much. It's, 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 it's a little bit. So if you can get a high-end Gen 3 drive, then buy it. If you can find a Gen 4 drive on sale, comparable to the Gen 3s, then buy it. They're backwards compatible, so you're good to go. What will happen is that the Gen 4 drive, you'll be able to use for Gen 4 systems and achieve those top speeds. That's it. If you know you're going to keep a laptop for a year to two years that you're upgrading right now, then, you know, the, the, my XPS, I could go for a Gen 3. So I'm looking at the 980 that came out and not the 980 Pro. And that one has faster caching. So I'm assuming it's going to be comparable to the Gen 4 drive at Gen 3 prices. So why not go and test that out to replace my 970 that I've been using for a while? I'm going to be keeping it for like two years. And then I don't know what I'm going to buy after. And it's cheaper. However, if I did find another Western Digital or another drive that was close to that 179 here in Canada, then yeah, if I found it for 200, why not? But if it's 250, mm, 179 is good for me because I know I can find the 970 for even cheaper around 125 to 150. So, I mean, this is the thought process that everybody's got to think about 
and not stress out about these little things like what are the test numbers? We just know that as you move up through the different drives that are better, you're gonna get a little bit better results. And if you have very old drives in there that are like three, four years old, you've tested them and they're super slow compared to these numbers, say you're using one of these Hynix that came with the laptop and you know, you're know you wondering, well, <laughs> Is that what I, you know, should I be upgrading that? Well, then, yeah, if you're around 2,000 megabytes per second when you can jump up to oh, close to 3,500 on the read and then like 2,500 on the right, 2,600, 2,700, why not? Easy peasy, decision to make. Quickest upgrade you're going to do that you're going to really appreciate. And that's all. Check out these videos. Hit your comment below and your question. Because I know if you watch this, you probably have some more. So let me know.